Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on the placement of the cells. So we have done with stage one and stage basically this stage of the design and this stage of the design. Let's continue with the remaining uh, remaining set of the design. Okay. So we have this blue colored logic which is flip flop one to some gates and flip flop two. And flip flop one is supposed to be close to D in, in D in three. D in three is placed somewhere over here here. Okay. And flip flop two is placed close to D out three. And D out three is placed over here. Okay, so let's do that. What we'll do is, since we know that D there is there is a huge distance, or there's a huge gap between D in three and D, D out three. Unlike we had D in one and D out one, which was placed on the same lines. In this case, it's like it, it's completely diagonal, diagonally opposite to it. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so we have this flip flop one, which we'll be placing close to D in three. We have the flip flop two, which we are placing close to D out three, and the logic at some intermediate distances. Okay, so now what to do with this particular huge distance and all? We'll look. We'll we'll come to that point in some time from now. But let's now uh, let's now just place it something like this, so that the the logic is placed diagonally. The output flop is close to the output port. The input flop is close to the input port. Let's do it in this way for now, and we'll see what can we do. Okay, and the next the next logic is the green color ones, which has got the flip flop one, which is close to D in four, and the D in four is placed somewhere over here. And the flip flop two is close to D out four. The D out four is placed somewhere over here. So again, there is a diagonally opposite, opposite I/O ports, and where in the center you have this big bunch of logic where you can't place any of the cells. So this is an even difficult situation than the previous one. Let's try to solve that as well. Okay. So we'll start with we'll start with flip flop one, flip flop two, and the intermediate logics. So let's place the flip flop one over here. Though it seems to be a bit at a far distance from D in four, we'll see what can we do about about this distance. Okay, flip flop one to one is at this distance. One to two is still at a at a higher distance. Two to flip flop two is still okay, and flip flop two to D out four is still okay. Okay, so the logic starts from here. It goes all the way around this thing and comes over here. So this is a bit a, a bit bigger problem for us to solve. So now that we have done with the placement, now let's try to solve the problems that we just discussed. The problems of this particular distance, and that problem, the solution to that problem is referred to as optimized placement. Okay, so what does optimized placement does? So now what we'll do is we'll do some estimations. Okay, and the estimations is that we'll estimate what will be the let's say let's take we'll take an example of from uh, let's say flip flop one to D in two. Yeah, flip flop one to D in two. Let's take this example. We will estimate the y. In reality, there will be some wires. There uh, there will be a wire which is which will be going from this way something like this and connecting to this flip flop one. Okay, so before even going into the wiring stage, before even routing the design. What we'll do is we'll try to estimate the capacitances. So if let's say the, if there was a wire from this point to this point, the capacitances which is epsilon a by d and the area is basically the uh, the completely overlap area. So in this case, the wire area will be the will be the actual area. So if 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 you if you look into the capacitances from this point to this point, that is very huge because there, it's a huge length of wire. And in in fact, even the resistance which is r. R is equal to rho L by A. Since because you have a huge length, there will be resistance. There will be huge resistance from D into to flip flop one. Okay. And what does that will do? So in general, if you see, if there is a person who is standing over here, and there is a person who is standing over here, and if this person sends a signal or this person shouts, it will be very difficult for this person to listen to D into because of this huge distance. Okay. In in other case, in other words, what we can do is in a, in a in a very simple solution. What we can do is we can place some person over here. We can place somebody over here. This person shouts to this person. This person again shouts to flip flop one. But again, there is some amount of distance. There will be loss of data. So what we'll do is we'll place one more. One we'll place somebody over here as well. So this person now sends a signal to this person. This one sends to this one. And this one sends to flip flop one. So whatever has been told by D into is now being successfully retained and sent to flip flop one. This is called signal integrity. Okay. To maintain the signal integrity, we need someone someone at the intermediate steps who will reproduce what this guy is trying to say. And that's what basically comes the concept of repeaters. So repeaters are basically buffers that will recondition your original signal, make a new signal. And which is which repre which replicates the original signal and send it again. Okay, this repeater will again reproduce its original signal and uh, create a new signal and send it to the following stage. In that way, the signal integrity is maintained. 
okay so we solve the problem of signal integrity by adding some extra repeaters or adding some extra buffers but there is a loss of area so more and more repeaters there will be more area which will be occupied on this particular complete on this particular complete floor plan so that that we have to still live with if we want to retain the signal integrity okay so let's move on we'll see where where where, and, uh, where we will be needing the buffers and repeaters okay so we'll start with the first stage the first stage is flip flop 1 it's close to d in 1 flip flop 2 close to d out 1 okay so assuming that there is a person who is sitting over here and assuming the listener is sitting over here this is the sender and this is the receiver so this signal send this uh, port send some signal and it has to cross a distance which is which is quite decent enough to cross okay so whatever this sender sends the flip flop one is able to receive without any deterioration so signal integrity is maintained between between the input port and the flip flop one input port input pin okay next from flip flop one to one this distance also seems to be very okay and let's say if the if we do all these calculations we estimate the wire length whatever we just talked about signal, integ signal integrity that is based on upon some wire length estimation and calculation so based on the based on the estimation of what will be the wire length there is some capacitance calculation and based on the capacitance calculation there is an there is a waveform that gets created and that waveform uh, should the, the transition of that waveform should be the in a permissible range so that's how we calculate that's how we decide whether the signal will reach from this point to this point so this thing whatever we talked will be covered in a timing analysis section which is coming just after this section okay where we will where, where we'll be talking about transition analysis data slew analysis okay we'll talk about that so basically the slew slew is basically depend upon dependent upon the value of the capacitor the higher the value of the capacitor the amount of charge required to charge the capacitor will be high and the and the slew will be even bad so so based on that we we estimate whether the signal will be able to reproduce correctly in the receiver stage so based on those analysis which we'll be doing in the in the upcoming videos we decide that the distance between flip flop 1 and 1 is reasonable enough now we see the distance between 1 and 2 and we see that it's reasonable enough so the send, this is now this becomes the sender this becomes the receiver and the signal integrity is being maintained okay now now let's say 2 is the sender flip flop 2 is the receiver and again the signal integrity is maintained and we don't need any repeaters in between this the, in between these two logic gates similarly we go from flip flop 2 to d out 1 and we see that okay the reasonable there's a reasonable amount of distance maintained between flip flop 2 and d out 1 the capacitance is sufficient enough for the signal to maintain its integrity and hence there is no need of repeaters okay let's look into a second stage Let's look into uh, the stage of flip flop one, the yellow colored flip flop one. In this case, what you see is the D in two is placed af at a far distance from flip flop one. Okay, and based on the capacitances, based on the estimated wire length and capacitances, we decide we come up with some value saying that the slew between slew is basically a transition. The signal transition goes beyond certain limit, and if it goes beyond certain limit, the signal which is present over here it's very difficult to reach this reach this signal over here in the same condition as 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 that of the input as that of the input slew so what we'll do as we discuss we'll place some repeaters so we estimate that this wire length is huge enough we estimate the capacitance is huge and th therefore we need to break this particular huge length and we break them using some repeaters so we added the first repeater okay so the signal which is present over here will be sent to this will be the, now this will be your sender this will be your receiver initially this was the sender and this was the receiver so now this is the sender this is the receiver you send the signal from d into it is it is it gets it gets received by uh, the buffer the buffer again reproduces it and sends it to the next buffer this next buffer again reproduces it reproduces it and sends it to the flip flop so in this way now the long distance has been cut down to shorter distances and now whatever d into is sending the flip flop one will be receiving it in a in a in a in a proper integrated manner without any deterioration pick with the help of this particular repeaters or buffers okay so that's the job of the buffers and if you go on to the further logic it seems that there is there is absolutely zero delay between or very negligible delay between flip flop one to one to one and flip flop two and d out two so we don't need any any buffers or any repeaters in this stage 
okay so in this way what we'll do we, we we try to maintain the signal integrity and we have still two stages to go so what we'll do is since i'm already running out of time we'll try to we'll try to optimize the placement for the remaining flops and try to try to come up with some ways of how to optimize it with some with the help of some minimum amount of repeaters so let's try to do all this in the next video thank you